Welcome to your Cochrane right now. This is a weekly podcast all about the best town in the world, Cochrane, Alberta, of course. And uh, summer's still going on, but actually we were just talking to Noel in the newsroom. He's been covering events here in Cochrane forever, and he's like, yeah. This is actually the busiest time of year for events, and it really, truly shows because just last weekend, this weekend, it is nonstop. You could not go home. We thought the summer was busy here in Cochrane because there was stuff going on every single weekend, but now there's so many things that... It's like, how do you pick and choose what to go to? So, I mean, our kids, of course, are involved in all sorts of activities. So we're running our kids around to the different things, their activities. But you're also trying to take in all these different local events. And it's like, how do you choose? There's just so much. And we're so fortunate. You don't even have to leave Cochrane to get uh, a whole dose of so many fun things. No, it's really cool. And uh, if this is the first time you're listening, my name's Eric Ruttle. Here's Lauren Meister. And Lauren, there is a great mystery afoot. We got to call the Pink Panther. Was he the detective or the bad guy? Ah, uh, Sherlock Holmes. I just what? watched the cartoon. I don't, I have no <laughs> idea. Inspector Gadget? Inspector Gadget would actually help because he could go, go Gadget I, arm. Yes. We usually have this massive Canadian flag right in the middle of Cochrane. It is on probably like a, I don't know, four story tall pole. It is missing. It is gone. No one knows what happened to the giant flag in Cochrane. Yeah, it's probably the biggest mystery that we've seen in Cochrane since this radio <laughs> station has launched almost four years ago. Uh, no one knows what happened to it. Mm-hmm. We know that this particular flag um, has had some wear and tear. I mean, it gets a little bit windy here yeah. in Cochrane sometimes, but it's still always up. And then even when it has come down, it's always been replaced really, really quickly. But now the flag's gone gone and it just looks like something is missing here in town something is afoot and we actually talked to jim uh, on the radio here a little bit earlier on and he said this happened in the early 2000s as well it disappeared for weeks and then it just magically reappeared we don't know who owns the the flagpole somebody probably does but i'm going with the biggest crime right now so we'll get the cochran rcmp on this They probably have detectives. I mean, they're probably on it. I mean, I think that this is probably one of the biggest cases, you know, the most ongoing active case that they have on their files right now. But we're hearing that (laughs) it's worth a lot of money. Like to replace that flag is like thousands of dollars. You got to imagine because it is huge. So if you have any leads, please call Crime Stoppers or uh, any, just call 911. (laughs) You're not supposed to call 911 unless it's an emergency. This is an Do emergency. Not listen to Eric. That is terrible advice. Also, <laughs> it, if you are the person who took the flag down, you're not supposed to just throw a flag in the garbage, no. right? Isn't that like, that's like throwing money in the garbage or something. Isn't it illegal? I think it's super illegal. I don't know. All I know about it is American flags, right? You see Americans, they get like actual people from the army folding it up and putting it nicely in the box. When people die. (laughs) No, that's how they retire flags. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about like when people actually like get buried with flags. Oh, yes, that too. And did you know, this is a fun fact, you can apply because they replace the flag at parliament every single day, right? You can apply to get that flag sent to you. It's Fun a fact. new one every single every day. Every single so day. So we're paying for that. Oh, my God. No, but we are. <laughs> yes, and your taxes. <laughs> yes, so that's awesome. So we pay for 365 exactly. new flags every single day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not in Cochrane, though. No, but we in, don't pay per, uh, in Canada. national we, taxes. Don't worry about that. We don't Just Cochrane taxes. Pay feder- that's all we pay. We don't have provincial <laughs> taxes. We only pay federal taxes. I'm not an adult. But Lauren. anyway, going back to the flag <laughs> discussion, we need to figure out who took the flag, where is the flag, and when is it returning? Hmm. Hmm. That's the main thing here. The police here in town could be a little bit distracted by, uh, we've dubbed this the scooter shooter here in the the, the newsroom. (laughs) Because earlier this week, it's not very funny, Bo Ridge was actually completely shut down. For about an hour, there was a shelter in place because there was a threat with a firearm. And uh, thankfully, the police said they arrived on site. They found the gun instantly. The guy didn't have it. But one little factoid really grabbed everyone, and it was he got away on a scooter. (laughs) I don't know about you, but like getting away on a scooter is... 
is pretty impressive. So, of course, our minds went to the fact that, like, so did he just, like, outrun the police on a scooter? Is that, like, and what kind of scooter was he riding? Was it a Razor? Was it an e-scooter? Was it a bird scooter? Or was it one of the roll scooters that was here in Cochrane a year ago? Because then, remember, those scooters, that that business went under, and then you could buy them via auction, Uh, You know, lots of different options. Like, what kind of a scooter was he actually on? So that was kind of the million-dollar question. So we actually, we had to go right to the source, (laughs) right? Yeah, we had to call the cops and be like, we need this scooter information. We didn't call 911, though. No, no, that's only for flag issues. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) We we talked to him, and he said there wasn't a high-speed chase with a scooter or anything. He left right before, like, even the person who was having the issue called the cops. Like he, he was like, I'm out of here. Hopped on an electric scooter, one that he owned or however he got it. It's just like a black and gray one. Yes. And he took off. Yes. So no high speed chase, no spike strip to try and pipe, pop a scooter <laughs> tighter. No. Nothing like that. But as that. far as we know, the scooter shooter is still <laughs> on his scooter, but he's not in Cochrane. And just to be clear, he did not shoot, shoot anything. Anyone. And uh, but man, RCMP, is it catchy! It's it's a really good headline. That's yeah, a great um, headline. <laughs> but yeah, RCMP did they did actually seize a, a firearm. Yeah. Uh, so you know, no one was hurt. No, no one was really in any imminent danger no. right after that shelter in place was lifted. So that's really really good news, and people are safe here in Cochrane, but yeah, the the suspect is on the loose, and so is the scooter. The scooter and the guy with uh, the gun who doesn't have the gun anymore. They said he's not an issue, though. Like, don't worry about him. He's most likely not even in the Cochrane radius anymore. Right. So, but if you see a scooter, guy shooting down, uh, like, Highway 22. Not he, shooting with a gun, though. No, just shooting just, down uh, fast yeah. on the scooter, to be clear. <laughs> They're going to regret giving out that detail. That is for (laughs) sure. Uh, And then also we were talking about how so many cool events are going down. This past weekend was Culture Fest over Mm -hmm. at the Lions Event Center. And they had 20 different countries uh, throughout the center. You could stop at each one, talk to them. And one of the best parts was each one had food. That always makes for the best event. And like the Ethiopia was just giving out free coffee because... Oh, Coffee cool. started in Ethiopia, but it was really cool because I took my kids down there and it was just a showcase of the people who make up Cochrane and these young kids dancing and they had their their traditional clothes on and it really just was a, a moment to celebrate town and the diversity that makes this Cochrane so incredible. We are a mixing pot and uh, it is awesome for everyone to be able to celebrate their heritage here. And again, I love that you don't have to leave Cochrane to be able to celebrate that and, and kind of get, you know, a little bit of a, a dabble in the different cultures and all the foods, which is such a bonus for people. I mean, who doesn't want to try different types of foods? It was really cool because uh, Jake from Matabi's Indian Cuisine, he was part of the India table and he was like, hey, do you want to try on a turban? Of course I do. That's cool. So he got his family to do it for me. I don't know. So uh, most of his family were rocking turbans. And I had to ask him, like, how long does this take? It took them to do me probably 10 to 15 minutes. I kept touching it, though. He he kept being like, hands off. I I was like adjusting. He's like, can you stop? But he said they themselves can do it in like five minutes, just part of their morning routine. And just like themselves. themselves. Like you don't need extra people yeah. helping. He was like, okay. hold this. No, don't hold it like that. Like, I'm not very good at these instructions. Well, clearly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was very cool uh, just to live in that kind of Yeah, culture, well, so. something so different, right? Yeah. So just to experience that. That's really cool. Yeah. And talking about local culture, we are about to race kids this weekend. With the diaper derby. <laughs> oh, I was like, "What are we, where are we going with this right now?" Uh, yes, outhouse yeah. races and diaper derby. Yes, baby. I know. I'm like, which <laughs> which angle here are we going with? Yes, the diaper derby. My goodness, did you ever put your kids in that? No, I I, I honestly have never. Uh, I've never even been to it. Oh, I, I have not seen the kids racing. How about Is it, you? Yeah, I put my daughter in when she nice. was a baby. So she, she win. Do you have a trophy at home? No. I've got to say, she didn't win. I know. You know, I think it's because 
She could have won. She would have won. Okay. She would have. So fast, and she she was so fast. I still remember how fast of a crawler she was. I swear she was the fastest baby in all of Cochrane back in 2016. So what happened? Why didn't she win? She got distracted. There was an obstacle on the course. An obstacle? Yes, because it's fall yeah. when this happens. Mm -hmm. And there was a leaf oh. on because they put this special carpet area out yeah. for the babies to crawl. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there was a leaf. And, you know, babies like to get distracted, and then they put everything in their mouths. Oh, no. So she, all of a sudden, she was straight on course to go straight in a straight line, and she was doing really, really well. She saw the leaf. She veered to the right, and then instantly she, like, sat down, grabbed no. the leaf, put it in her mouth. Oh, and I was like, her racing career is over. It's over. Done. <laughs> Yeah. Like, were you like those sports moms? Were you like, crawl? It just didn't work Well, I was, I was on the finish line, oh, and I can't remember. I had, like, her favorite you. toy, and yeah. I was screaming. I was like, Ruby, oh. come here. You got to come this way. Uh, but, I mean, she to be fair, she was less than a year old. She Fine. was, like, 10 months old. She Leaves are the, tasty, the leaf man. was way cooler yeah. than me at the time. Yeah. She didn't care. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you want to try and uh, beat Lauren's daughter and actually get to the end, uh, that's going down this weekend. I know they do registration pretty close up to the event. And honestly, it's just a great time to go check out. It's pretty all, cool. And all that stuff. <laughs> and the outhouse races are also going down this weekend. It is exactly how it sounds. We race outhouses down the street and everyone claps and cheers. We are actually borrowing Toyotas because I got to give a huge shout out to there's 18 teams, the most ever in outhouse races. We have no idea how you would build an outhouse. Like we have to borrow one because I don't know. I have like a hammer. Would you just like nail pieces of wood together? I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're lacking a lot of the skills yeah. here at Cochrane now. Um, and every year we keep saying this, that next year we'll get our next own year. outhouse. So fingers crossed that 2024 we'll yeah. have our own outhouse. Uh, thank goodness Toyota likes us. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they, maybe they just feel pity yeah. for us. I, I think I, it's pity. I don't like, know yeah. really, but we really appreciate yeah. Cochrane and Toyota and uh, how they're very generous and they lend their outhouse to us. But uh, yeah, I don't know. because And it's interesting because everybody has a different strategy on how they build their outhouses because everybody has a different shape yes. and some are way more aerodynamic than other some have really big wheels some have small wheels and uh but really you need four runners and then you need one person to sit in the outhouse and that's basically what you need you run to the end turn around run to back to the start line again and uh we're gonna see how it goes this year i love talking to new people in town because you just give them no information you say are you coming to the outhouse races yeah. this weekend like, it's just a total normal thing that we do all the time here Well, in I mean, yeah, it's just, why not, right? Yeah. And it, we'd be amiss not to talk about the biggest thing going on in town, of course, the road construction still. It's uh, still happening? Still happening here in town. Uh, first and Center's closed down. Uh, there's paving starting uh, in the George Fox Trail area. And really, they keep you on your toes because today we left the station. We had to go to a little meeting outside to Chez Soi, actually. So we went up and then we tried to come back the way we actually came but in which the should work in theory half an hour they start paving that area so then we got turned around and then we we're all from Cochrane. we all have our super secret shortcuts yeah they just were failing us left right and center so you still have to be on your toes so we got turned around and we ended up in a parking lot yeah. over by where were we <laughs> I don't even know. In front of the even, new CCA. You were, yeah, building. you were driving. I was, I was driving in the back poorly. seat. Yeah. So, yeah. I th yeah, maybe it would have helped if I was driving. Yeah. I don't know. And you got to give but, it to those construction workers because everything's changing for them as well. Exactly. So they're yeah. like, no, you can't go this way this minute right now. You got to go this way. And they're giving you hand signals. And you're like, I don't know what I'm but doing. But honestly, it, it was honest, like, even in a half hour, everything changed for us. And yeah. then we got turned around and then we're like, okay, let's go this way. Oh, wait, no, that's not going to work. Let's go this way. And hang on. No, that's actually not going to work. Let's go this way. And then I, we were able to finally get back to the radio station. And it's just funny because we were all joking because we're, we're actually really – less than a block away from work but we were across the train track so it's like we we're so close but so far away and we just couldn't get back to work and people of course are dealing with this every single day here in Cochrane. and i think you just need to have a little bit of sense of humor about it you know what would fix it all traffic circles 
More traffic circles. <laughs> yes, people would love that. First and yes. center traffic circle. George Fox traffic circle. Throw one on railway too. Why not? Just traffic circles. You know, circles. honestly, because I take like 15 nice. on my way into work and outside of work because mm. I live on the other end of town where all the traffic circles are. Uh, it was a bit of a rough go for about a year when they first all came into play. But now... I maybe almost get rear-ended maybe once a week now. Well, like, it's not, not that bad. bad compared to what it was. Yeah. So people do get used to them. I saw that somebody going up the 1A22 traffic circle went the wrong way this week. Nice. So they, they went left. So I, I'm I sure mean, that's, that's fine. Right? Nothing too serious yeah. has happened so far. Fine. It's all good. That is everything going on in Cochrane right now. Of course, you can snag this podcast on all your favorite podcast services like Podcastville and Spotify, Apple, all those places. And until next week, talk to you again soon. Yeah.